Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance, and this is a Batcher Tineon 15558, the Tier 10 French SPG, and we're on the Grand Battle Map. This is Nebelberg. Yep, it's that place again. Um, and the commander of this vehicle is Fenderbender. Yes, you've seen him battle before. And look at everybody with their uh, Christmas decoration. Now, Fenderbender's headed off to the back of the map into the uh, top right hand corner, or we should say the northeast corner. Is he going climbing? Certainly looks like it. Not going all the way up, are we? Nope. But he might as well do something because this particular RT does have rather long time to uh, reload. Yes, it's got a magazine of three shells and about 49 seconds to reload the clip and 10 seconds between each round. Okay, now. First two targets turning up, TVP, T5051, very dangerous opponents. Those are very nice mediums. Rounds out. Oh, he, he hit both of them. He splashed both of them and he did critical hits to both of them. And he's picking up stun assist straight away. Wow, that was a really good shot. Now, one of the good things about the Bat Chat 155.58 is it does have a turret, which makes it very much easier to just park the vehicle and aim at the target. The other good thing is it's got the Batchat 25T chassis and that means it's fairly fast, 20, uh, 60 kilometers per hour. I think, I believe it's 60 kilometers an hour. 62, I was wrong, yeah two out on that. Um, so it's quite fast at relocating. Okay, objects 268, round out. And he gets a 301 hit point splash. Okay, load it again. Round out again on 268. Gets some more damage, but it was only two critical hits this time. But he has extended the stun assist, and the object 268 has been taken out. So he picked up 861 stun assist off that. Okay, there's a whole bunch of enemy tanks all grouped together there. Very nice, tempting target at the moment. T110E4, T110E5 and a 113. All together. Now, if only he's fully loaded. <laughs> and the E4 regrets his decision to move ahead. Because he gets whacked twice. Very, very quickly. And he's about to get hit again. Because Fender Bender's ready to go. And it's a difficult shot over the edge of that rock. But he fires. And he gets a hit. 103 hit points of splash. There's an E100 there. Is he going through the 113? Yes. Lining up. Rounds out. 159 off the 113. Looks like it's going to go again on the 113. Uh, only one hit point this time. So he must have just caught the edge of the explosion. Oh, he's picking up some stun assist though. Because that shell went into the rear of the E100. You can see the yellow mark on the skirts. Those skirts are there to design to actually protect the tracks from high explosive rounds. It certainly looks as if that E100 has been on the receiving end of a high explosive round. Okay, 10 seconds ready to have another magazine. Okay, the shells are loading and... Okay, they're, they're in. Rounds out. Direct hit there. I think he got the E100. Yes, he did. Going for the uh, 113. Direct hit, 346. Good shot. Massive amount of stun on these tanks. 
It means he's going to pick up lots of stun assists if he can get them. Oh, another 130 off the 113. But he's now in a reload cycle again. Well, the good news is he actually carries 36 rounds. But it's just such a long time to wait between uh, the clips being loaded in. Now, they actually did build a prototype of the 155-58. But uh, unlike the 155-55, which was never built, it was just a paper tank. Lining up a shot in the 100. Rounds out. Direct hit. No explosion, so the shell definitely hit home while he was blind. Lining up another one, and is he going to fire? No, he's going to hold off. There it is. He's been tracked. And that one goes in as well. He's down to 180 hit points. He's got one round left in his magazine. He can make this count and take out the E100. Rounds out. And he gets him. So that's his first kill. Now his team's doing rather well. There's 14 to 11 at the moment. He's focusing all his energy on the south of the map at the moment. But of course, if he manages to capture this area of the map, his team should be able to sweep around to the west and to the north. And that should help take out the enemy that are in the strongholds in the town and the heights above the town. That Jaeger root is taking a lot of damage from the stun and splash. And Bender Bender's ready to go. Unfortunately, the Jaeger is directly behind that rock and it does protect him to a certain extent. He is protected. There's the T124. Now he can hit that easily. Rounds out. And that's a splash hit. 297. 10 seconds between each shot. And there's the Jaeger who's come out of his hiding place. Very bad decision. He's very slow in reverse. Rounds out. And that just stunned him. But he's got another round ready to go in a second. Now, rounds out. If he keeps moving south. Yes, it was a direct hit. Right into the side of the uh, the uh, cockpit, I should think. Well, not the cockpit, but the... Uh, the housing. Okay, so he's decided to come off his cliff face. Yes, yeah, so I said this. Um, it's basically designed on the chassis of the Batchat 25T, um, but they never got around to uh, putting it into mass production. It's quite nippy, 62 kilometers an hour. Okay, so having a look with Battle Assistant whilst he's on the move, that's why it's jigging about quite a bit. He's getting close to the enemy, that will cut down the reaction time and makes it easier for him to get hits. And he's having a quick look to the north. Okay, stop moving now. and select his next target. There's the Jaeger who he hit a short while ago. We might be able to see where he hit it because it, the mods I use will leave a little yellow stain where the where the high explosive round landed and that's right on the front. <laughs> 120 hit points right into his front. I bet we'll see a yellow mark on the uh, on the port side of that uh, Jaeger and there's another one now. <laughs> He's knocked his tracks off. <laughs> He's stationary now. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, I know. It's sad, isn't it? I do get a laugh when I see something like that. Terrible, really, I suppose. But there you go. Now he's finding a nice position to fire from that's reasonably safe. And I think he's going to go up on that hill a little. 
Yep, that's what he's going to do. And from there, from that elevation, he should be able to fire without any hindrances. There's a Type 5 Heavy there. Oh, that's a nice big juicy target. Now, they're difficult for enemy or team for his teammates to penetrate, but not for him. Not with a high explosive round. Rounds out. Beautifully judged right onto the target. He led that target. He aimed the shot ahead of the target. Let the target just drive into the shot. Oh, he stopped prematurely. That one fell just ahead of him. But now he's backing away because he's fired his round. And he doesn't want to get hit. But hes I think he's trapped. He is trapped. And that's a direct hit again. 43 hit points. And he was taken out immediately afterwards. So he picks up stun assist. Right. Now there are four tanks ahead at the moment. He's in reload. And he's motoring again. And he's now in enemy territory. Uh, quite a few of the tanks he'll be seeing from now on. The Rex are going to be enemy Rex. Not T-Rex. Now he's got a Super Conqueror ahead of him. And that Super Conqueror might be able to find the Conqueror gun carriage on the enemy team. But there's only 3 minutes 55 seconds to go on the clock so mm, this battle hasn't got much longer left to, uh, uh, to run. They really need to push now. Well Fenderbend is focusing on the island. He's still moving. Ah, there's the Super Conqueror. Okay, he's got a magazine. He's ready. He's loaded. He can stun that uh, Super Conqueror. Rounds out. Landed onto the rock, unfortunately. But the Conqueror was taken out by the GWE-100. So he must have had a better angle. Yeah, because he's around in grid square B8. So he must have had a better angle on that, uh, on that tank. Okay, there's the bat chap 155.58 on the enemy team. Oh, he stopped prematurely. He's obviously stopping to fire. He's trying to work out precisely where he is. Now, I thought I heard the whoosh of a shell leaving. If so, that might be the 155.58. But there's a target he can hit in the meanwhile. T124, rounds out. He is backing into it. Oh, well, he's stunned it. And he's picked up a huge amount of stun assist. Everyone's going after him. Two minutes, ten seconds. This one's going down to the wire. There's only two remaining enemy vehicles. A Conqueror gun carriage and a T124. And they know where the E4 is. They don't know where the Conqueror gun carriage is. Not yet. Seven seconds to reload complete. Okay, shells are in. There's the Conqueror gun carriage. Okay, so we know where the last remaining enemies are. And that's the end of the battle. That was the last remaining enemy. Such a pity that Fender Bender couldn't get another round off. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And it's an ace tanker for Fender Bender in the Badger on 155.58. He did more than enough work in that battle to earn an ace. He also picked up a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 17. He picked up 14 bombs and he got Confederates as well. He hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. So he was working extremely hard and you can see that there. Okay, when it came to damage, he was in fifth place. 3,119 hit points of damage. And when it came in kills, well, he was about mid-table with only one kill of the E100. But when it came to base XP, well, he was second with 1,067, beaten by the T92, who had 1,209 in total. And he picked up a Confederate as well.
He fired 24 rounds, got 10 direct hits, 10 penetration and 17 splash. Did damage of 3,119 hit points, all at more than 300 meters. He hit 11 of the enemy, uh, so more than a third of the enemy team, and managed to get one kill. He also did 600 hit points of damage assistance and a massive 5,970 hit points of stun assistance of 26 stuns. On a standard account, he earned 63,316 credits. And there's a whole the ops bonus missing in there. After ammunition resupply, it's fairly cheap for the ammo for the 155. Uh, he actually took away 59,230 credits in total. He received 1,067 base XP. And there's another whole the ops bonus missing there. So he took away 1,451 in total. So very good battle there. An ace grand battle. Uh, nice to see an ace tanker for the Batchat 15558 as well as a confederate. Uh, if you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel and hopefully it will be your replay I'll be featuring in our next video.